everybody, welcome back to Rich Bag Creations. We're back with our DIYs. Today I'm gonna to make the Golden Snitch and I just picked one of the different versions you see throughout the series because there is quite a lot of differences from the first Golden Snitch to the last one. So even though they're supposed to be the same, but you know. But I just looked at some reference pictures from the Harry Potter Studios in London and so that is the one I'm gonna to make today. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do for this creation is to roll up a ball of aluminum foil. I just started rolling layers by layers and I think it needs another layer before it's thick enough. That's what I'm just going to do now. And just make sure that it's really tight so we don't create any air bubbles. So you just want to squeeze it really hard and make sure that it isn't bendable after you made it and you just want to size it up with your hand so it's roughly I don't know fitting into your hand nice and neatly so what I'm going to do with the ball now is I'm going to add a layer of clay on the outside and I just rolled out a even piece of polymer clay that I'm just going to add on So what I'm doing now is just getting that layer on, making sure there's no air bubbles in between the clay and the aluminum foil. And where I see it's a little bit thin or a little bit too thick, I'm just gonna remove and add on small pieces until I get a really nice circular shape. So what I'm doing now is just rolling out the clay and making an even surface. If there's any like bumps like this inside, I'm just going to squeeze them out. And after I rolled it and made sure that it has a really imper like a perfect surface, I'm going to put it in the oven to bake for 30 minutes. So while the ball is in the oven, I'm going to start on the wings and I made one wing off camera, but this is roughly what it's going to look like in the end and then I'm going to bake them at a curve like this so you get a bend shape in the sculpture. So what I did with the wings was that I have rolled out a gazillion miles of thin clay and I'm just going to add small pieces really close to each other and I drew a sketch of the wing on my piece of paper here. And I'm just going to squeeze on. They can be a little bit longer. I'm going to cut them to the line afterwards. And I'm just going to push them on and attach each and every one of them, the entire line, all the way up. So what I'm going to do after I laid out all the pieces is just gently squeeze them to the baseline that I attached first. And after I secure them well enough, I'm just going to cut off the excess on the top and cutting the excess along the lines underneath. The last thing I'm going to do with the wings after I'm just going to knead it up and just make sure that everything sticks well is to cut small angular pieces on all the tips of the feathers. And that is really it for the wings and then I'm going to bake them as well at 30 minutes at 110 C. So when I put this in the oven, I forgot to actually engrave some lines into the clay. So the line starts, this is where the ball is going to be on top. So the lines go from the inside of the sort of grill looking 
areas on each side and they go down and go across the bottom in a slight outgoing bow and then it goes in again on the back side and it goes like an S sort of shape into the ball area that I'm going to add on later on. So it's a continuous line on each side and you can see it here as well around what I've already added on one side and it goes around the S that I'm going to add now. So in this area here I just added one line going across and I just made some indents where it's going to intersect with the indentation like the lines that go inwards. And above that one bottom line I'm going to add four small lines in that eclipse shape and I'm just going to attach them one on one each time and I'm just going to put it down and then lay it flat and just squeeze it out and just work it into the snitch. So that's pretty much it for the line and I'm just going to add three more above it. Okay, so that is the grill area finished and now I'm going to go ahead and add the bow that is on the top. And it's a little bit thicker piece than what it was in this area. This is sort of almost like a spaghetti thickness and the other one was a little bit thinner. And I'm going to add that here. So the line I added just goes from here and it go above the grill area. Then it goes into a slight point before it curves outwards to the back. And now I'm just going over and attaching it to the ball. Just blending out the edges and making it look neat. And after that I'm just going to go ahead and add the little balls on top where the little track ends on each side. And then I'm going to bake it one more time. So once I was finished with these lines here and the front on both sides, I just added the blobs right here and I made a little hole so that I can stick the wings in later on. And I just put them on top of the little indent line I have here. Now I'm just going to add the details on top and I probably should have had a little bit more space here that these two lines would have been further out and towards the bottom. So I have a little bit too little space to work on right here, but I'm just going to work myself around it. So in the middle, it's two S's that are mirrored. Then there's one long line, like here, and a short one on the edge. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add the last long line on the right side, or the left, or whatever which way this comes out. And I'm just going to squeeze it on and just blend the edges, and that's really what I'm doing everywhere on the snitch. And that is pretty much it for the top details. It's not much more going into it. Just going to squeeze it on and cram it in there. It's a little bit tight and you might have to move it around a little bit to get it where you want it to be. And when you add it like that, you can also use a ball tool and just smooth out the edges in between. And you might have to cut off some excess in the top and bottom. Depends. You just have to look at it and really recommend looking at some reference pictures while you do this. Because it is tricky and there's a lot of details going into a really tiny area. So that is the finished pattern on the top. And when you roll down, I just added two leaf looking shapes on the bottom as well using the same technique as on the top, just adding some rolled out pieces of clay and just squeeze out the edges. And now I'm just going to flip it in the oven and put it like this so that both sides can bake at once. And after that is baked, I'm going to spray paint it alongside with the wings. For the bend shape of the wings, I just put them in a baking bowl while having them in the oven, just having a parchment paper in between. And then I glued on a piece of steel wire across the top so it's a little bit more sturdy. I can bend and flex it a little bit. 
and I just glue that onto the end here so that I can insert it into the snitch once it's fully sprayed and dried. So after it was finished in the oven, I just spray painted it gold. I did it in two sessions, having it upside down once and then turning it upright. And I painted the wings separately. So when all that was dry, I just put in some super glue inside of holes of little bumps and I just squeezed the wings out. And since I have the steel wire, I can bend the wings a little bit and position them the way I want. So as you can see, it is a new day. Actually, a lot of our projects do take more than one day to record. So I didn't bother to do my makeup two days in a row because I'm all lazy. But anyways, this is the finished golden snitch as of now. I'm considering weathering down and like washing a little bit of black into the crevices, but I'm not sure yet. So I'm just going to leave it be for the moment. And I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching.